الأمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا وحبيبنا وعظيمنا وقائدنا محمد بن عبد الله الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وصحابته الغر الميامين وعلى كل من سار على منواله واقتفى آثاره بإحسان إلى يوم القرار والخلود والثبات والدين أما بعد The chairman of this great occasion my highly esteemed and respected professor brothers and sisters all protocol duly observe salamu min allah alaykum wa rahmatu minhu wa barakatuhu first and foremost some of the things he said on me i'm not that person because i know myself better umar yani abu bakr siddiq says اللهم اجعلني خير مما يظنون وقيني شر ما لا يعلمون ولا تؤاخذني بما يقولون او الله دو ميك مي بيتر ذان ذي اكسبكتيشنز دونت تيك مي تو ذا تاسك افون ذي اكسبريشنز ابن تيميه وين هي واز بيبل توكت اباوت هيم هي وال انا لست بشيء ولا لي شيء ولا مني شيء اي ام نو بودي and i have nothing nothing belongs to me that is what i have to say because i know myself better than what my brother will say thank you very much for your kind remarks on uh this poor miskin created entity i'm not international i am local of the locals <laughs> today 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 is the uh Certain day of the month of Rajab. Are you fasting? I am a bit. Today is 13, tomorrow 14, and 15. Fast these three days. Very important according to the Sunnatic narrative. If you fast these three days, you are definitely going to maximally acquire a lot of reward from Allah the Almighty. Please take that into consideration. In brackets, the fourth day of the month of uh, February 2023. CE, don't say 80. Don't say 80. Because I have warning people to desist from using the terms 80. Because if I should ask you, tell me the meanings of these initials, 80. What are you going to tell me? You will tell me after that. That is a catastrophic mistake. It is a pathological mistake. Don't say AD. Well, you say it because of quotation. If you tell me after, then I ask you, who dies? Who dies? So it should be AC after Christ. From the onset, my respected chairman and members of uh, these August gathering, let me start by making a reference to what happened almost some 600 years back, almost. When Abdurrahman al-Dakhil, the falcon of the Arabs, as is popularly known, Sakr al-Arab, when he left Damascus at the end, at the demise of the Umayyad Empire, when the Abbasid were looking helter-skelter for them to be butchered, to be killed, he narrowly escaped their hot pursuit through Libya, Algeria, and then to the Iberian Peninsula. That was in 611 CE. At the age of 26, a minor, you will say, yet he went and established the new Umayyad Caliphate in Portugal, in Spain, and some part of the southern uh, France. That caliphate spans for more than 800 years until it was destroyed by Queen Isabella of Sicily and her husband Oregon, I mean Ferdinand of Oregon, Ferdinand. In 1492, the so-called year in which Columbus discovered America is a lie. It was there Columbus himself was discovered. Muslims are in America before coming of Columbus or Amerigo Vespucci. Look, my point is this guy was minor. 
was young, but he was there at the Iberian Peninsula. He established scholarship. He built the biggest mosque in Cordova or Cordoba as a den. Then Cordoba had lights. They were not there in London, in Vienna, in Venice, but in the Muslim heartland. There, a lot of scholastic scholars, scholarly scholars were produced. Ibn Hazm, Al-Andalusi, Al-Gharnati, Al-Imam Shatibi, the writer of Shatibiya, Bada'atu bi bismillahi fin nadmi awwala tabaraka rahman rahiman wa maw'ila 1,730 stanzas in Arabic. In Shatiba, it was there. It was there Ibn Mali, the prophetic writer on Ilmun Nahaw, syntax, produces Alfiya. Qala Muhammadun huwa Ibn Maliki Ahmad ibn Nafid. People like Al-Bajuri were there. The point here at the beginning is that he was a young man. And you know what? On reaching that peninsula, the local people said, well, this man came here to conquer us, to establish a super culture upon ours. Let's try and seduce him. You know what they did? They brought to him a beautiful young lady. Beautifully beautiful. Mesmerizingly beautiful. Crushingly beautiful. They brought her to him. He looked at her. He said, Inna al-ayna latashtahi min amthaliki in kana rajul sahihan lakinna ni jiitu huna li muhimmatin in inshagaltu biki an muhimmati dhalamtu muhimmati wa in inshagaltu bihim bi muhimmati anki dhalamtuki idhhabu biha anni la hajata li fiha At the age of 26 he said, well no eye of a healthy person will look at you without picking interest in you. Girl, you are beautiful. You are attractive. You are, you are, you are, you are. But I am here for an assignment, young man. If I am, my attention is taken, conquered by your beauty, I am going to wreak havoc on my assignment. And if I am dutiful to my assignment, I will wreak havoc on you. Take her out of me. I am not interested. They say, what? In al amira Vuhimma. Young man at the age of 26. Later, they brought to him wine. Alcoholic consumption. What did he say? He said, Inneni uriduma yazidu fi akli la ila ma yanqusu min akli. I need something to increase my mental activity, not something to drastically reduce my mental functional faculty. I will never take it. Why did I start? To tell you, These are the examples of my parents. Now, the young people of today, what are you doing? This should be the beginning of my discussion. My chairman, going to participate in the debate holding here in BOK, organized by Media Trust, they invited me that governors are going to be are going to have debate. To me, to me, to me, this is more important to me, this one. So if there is a remainder of time, I may, otherwise I can be deputized. Somebody is there. To me, I am meeting brothers and sisters, the young ones coming up. Let's share the knowledge. My system in presentation, I talk, I ask. So I'm going to ask you, I talk, you should answer me. Are you ready for that? Are you? Are you? Wa'afu bil ahdi inna al kana masula. The topic is today, I told you the date. Today, let me congratulate MSSN. MSS today is almost clocking 70 years. 70 years. 
MSS was founded in 1954. Next year, 2024, will be 20, 70 years old. So it has done a lot previously, hoping to do more and more and more and more and more. More grace to your elbow. The topic is, uh, as you have heard, announced and, and introduced is uh, leadership and national development, the role of the Muslim youth. So the key words here are three, leadership, and then national development, and then what? the Muslim youth and his role. Now, let me start first by uh, telling you about the value, the importance, the inescapability of leadership in the House of Islam. Leadership, in Arabic we say al-imara, al-siyada, Al Qiyada, Alisa Kadalik, or Al Ariasa. If you take Al Riasa, Al Riasa is from Al Ras. What is Al Ras? Because he's the leader. In the head, there are a lot of faculties there. Eyes. It's within the region. The mouth. Okay? The nose. The respiratory organ. Is here. The eyes look at the road for you. So it is the leader. Hence, they call this part of the body a ras. Ras from riasa. You say the head of state. What do you say? Kanjiha. Kanjiha. That is Hausa. Leader. So because of the importance, we say a riasa. Now, you cannot talk about Riasa without political, without politics. A siyasa. Correct? Okay, what is siyasa? Literally, siyasa, the ulama say, take the definition. I'm going to ask you. That's my sister. I talk, I ask. Ma kutiba qarra, ma hafidha farra. What is documented is assimilated. What is heard goes away. Makyu. They say, as siyasa huwa al-qiyamu ala shay'i bima yuslihuhu. That is just terminological definition. As siyasa, take it again. As siyasa huwa al-qiyamu ala shay'i bima yuslihuhu. Meaning to be vigilant on something purposely to make it rectify. But from the technical aspect, as siyasa al-inshigalu bima sa'ila hukmiyya you use the power machinery to make people worship Allah the Almighty. That is why in chapter 22 of the Quran, chapter 22, verse number 41, Allah says, الَّذِينَ إِمْ مَكَّنَّهُمْ فِي لَرْضِ أَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَوُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَأَمَرُوا بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَحُوا أَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَاللَّهِ أَقِبَةُ الْأُمُورِ those that we have established on the face of the earth, okay, they make prayer to be established. That is number one. They give zakat. They command people to do good things and forbid same from committing indecencies and moral laxity. That is the prerequisite of good leadership in Islam. That is siyasa. Similarly, in Sahih Muslim, Hadith 182, in Kitabul Imara, Muslim reports from Abu Huraira that the Prophet says, Kanat Banu Israela Tasusuhum Ambiya Uhum. Ida Halaka Nabiyun Khalafahu Nabiyun. The point is Tasusuhum. The Israelite used to be led and governed through their Prophet. When a prophet dies, another one crops up. The point is Tasusu. So Siyasa is from Sasa Yesusu mm -hmm. Siyasatan. Actually, that word Sasa 
In Arabic, in, in the signs of the syntax, the etymological configuration, as-sarfu, we call it sasa filun ajwafi, hul ajwaf. Li wujud al-hamza bayna al-seen wa al-seen. So that alif signifies wawun. It's from sawasa yaswusu. Like qala is from qawala. Those who learn Arabic, you know what I'm talking about, okay? Like sara yaswusu. So sasa yaswusu. That is leadership. But Lasul will tell you, well, politics is the authoritative allocation of value in society. To me, he is saying nothing. He's a professor of political science. Authoritative allocation of value in society. What are you saying? Our own definition from our own Islamic civilizational sensitivities are by far much wider, more encompassing than this narrow kind of definition. Because as a Muslim, as a Muslim, I remember my professor Abdurashim Martin. So years there in UK, we are not there then, when we are there. He's a political guru. He taught me Paul Science in the university here. Like my Ebon, a non-Muslim, but I learn a lot. All right, may Allah have mercy on the Muslims amongst them. Now I came to understand that uh, if you're talking about leadership, politics, leadership are like a sausage, inseparable. Okay? But they tell you that is politics. In Islam, leadership is looked at holistically in the light of chapter number 6, verse 152. Sorry, 162. Allah says, Ul, inna salati, mm -hmm. wa nusikim. ومحياي ومماتي لمن لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت أن tell them my prayers my sacrifice and my living leadership is done while living not in the grave that's a shy so Allah says ومحياي so whatever you do should be punctuated by the do's and don'ts of Allah the Almighty don't tell me, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God. That is backward. That is backwardness. Now, because of the importance of leadership, let me quickly give you this breakdown. Al-Imam al-Bukhari, Muhammad ibn Ismail al-Bukhari, who was born in 194. Al-Bukhari in his compendium, Sahih al-Bukhari, wrote Kitab al-Ahkam, the book on leadership. Cross-check it. It's the book number 80 in Sahih al-Bukhari. And he wrote Abwab, Bab, 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 sub-chapters. He had about, not about, exactly 53 chapters on leadership. 53 in Kitab al-Ahkam Bukhari. To tell you what, the importance of leadership. His disciple, Imam Muslim, al qushairi al Naisaburi, in his own compendium, his collection, he has Kitabul Imara, the book on leadership. Is the book number thirty-three. He had fifty-six chapters there to prove what the importance. The necessity, if you like it, the inescapability of leadership in Islam. Comes next, Al Imam Abu Dawood, Sulaiman ibn al Ash'af al Sijistani. He was from Eastern Iran, Abu Dawood. Not from Arabian nation, Eastern Iran. Muslim too was from. North Southern Iran. Wonderful. Ibn Majah Qazwini from Qazwin in Iran still. What happened to Iranians? Look at these people with knowledge of Sunnah. Okay, that's a different issue, but they are interrelated anyway for the sake of knowledge. Abu Dawud in his own hadith collections composed of 4,800 narratives 
He had the book of Kitabul Kharaj Wal Imara Wal Fay. Al Imara is mentioned here. Imara means leadership. And it is book 14. He had 41 chapters on leadership. Imam Tirmidhi, Isa ibn Isa Tirmidhi, in his own collection, Jami al Tirmidhi, he has Abuab al Ahkam, Al Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, number 15, he had 42 different chapters still on leadership. Similarly, Imam al Nasai, Ahmad ibn Shu'ib, who died in the year 303 after Hijra. In Sunan al Nasai, he has Kitabul Bay'a, is the Kitab book number 40. He has 39 different chapters concerning leadership. Ya Salah, Ibn Majah, Abu Abdullah al Qazwini, has Kitabul Ahkam, like Imam al Bukhari, the book on leadership. And it is book number 13 with 33 different chapters. Ibn Taymiyyah al-Harrani, who was born in 661 and died 728 Hijri, had a whole book, very important, known as As-Siyasat al-Shari'iyya fi Islahi al-Ra'i wa Ra'iyya. Islamic political system in correcting the governors and the governed, the leaders and the lay, the teachers and the taught. Very important book. You can ill afford being unable to read it. Get my English. You can ill afford being unable to read it. Get it well. You can ill afford. Because it matters. A lot, especially if you're a political science, political science student. Now, Ibn Taymiyyah, his student, his student, who is that? Who is that? Ibn al Qayyim has his own book, Al Turuq al Hukumiyyah, on leadership. Al Mawardi, you know Al Mawardi, Sulaiman, has Ahkam al Sultaniyyah on leadership. Our own, Abdullah ibn Fodi, the younger brother of, who can tell me? Tell me yes or no. The younger brother of Abdullah of Muhammad Bello. I'm waiting for your answer. You cannot be quiet. You cannot be muted. You have to speak. That is my system. As I talk, you to have to talk. Abdullah ibn Fodi, the younger brother of Muhammad Bello, yes or no? Give me an answer. No. Can I hear you? No. Again? No. Sisters? La hawla wa la quwwata illa Capital no. He was the younger brother of Shia Uthman. He is an uncle to Muhammad Bello. Abdullah ibn Fodi. When he was leaving Sokoto, maybe to go to Sudan, he branched here in Kano. Some years back, talking about more than 100 years back, even 200. People of Kano, we then held him, said, No, we cannot lose people like you. Sit here, write a book on leadership. He wrote his book. The name of the book is Diyaul Hukam, Fi Malahum Wa Alihi Min Al Ahkam. All this on leadership. So leadership or politics, you cannot play with it. Depending on how the apparatus of power is utilized. Having said this, leadership, you can't play with it. But you know what? At times we make the expensive mistake of thinking as you're only talking about the chairman of local government the governor in a state, the president, the VC in a university, provost, or rector, forgetting about yourself. As SUG president, that is leadership there. MSSN, Amir, is a leadership. The Imam in a masjid is leadership. 
you as a wife in your house you are a leader arguably somebody driving a car to Kasina to Sokoto to wherever is a leader in his own way you have to drive carefully professionally dexterously otherwise you plunge people into trouble if I hold my chalk teaching my student I'm a leader there I have to teach diligently competently professionally otherwise I am falling apart so leadership the concept the conceptualization is much wider than locally envisaged get me correctly so having gotten this now let me go to the meaning of what is national development development itself is what what's wrong what is development Undeveloped, correct? Nigeria is underdeveloped. Look, this kind of terms, where are you going with these terms? BUK, my university is developed. To me, I say yes, because it produces me too. But I'm not, but I say the key people, selfish. I'm not selling selfish anyway. All right? <clears throat> Well, it's developed. If building means development. If absence of examination malpractices means development, then it is. If the teacher undermarking and overmarking student characterize the academic system, then it is developed or undeveloped, depending on the situation. If going nakedly because you are an Akada girl, a Muslim, like a kafir, is that development? If imitating the punky guys with your hairdo, with ass down, astaghfirullah, in the name of being in university, that is not. So what I am saying, development, is the process of upliftment that can be physically, spiritually, and mentally. In Islam, each and every human being is made of two parts, physical and spiritual. In Quran chapter number 30, Surah to Dawood, Surah to Sa'ad, verses 70 to 71, Allah says, إذ قال ربك للملائكة إني خالق بشرا من طين فإذا سويته ونفخت فيه من روحي فقعوا له ساجد. He said, I will create a man from the dust. So you have a dusty part. فإذا سويته after I have blown in after I have proportioned him, I'm blown in of my spirit. So you have a physical and spiritual combination to produce you. So each and every human entity is made of two parts, physical and spiritual. They are like a sausage, inseparable. Mutadakhilan, mutashabikan, mutaawinan. But you are a man by spiritual reality, not physical reality. A man can be handsome, but he's an arm robber. He's ugly in this case. A girl can be crushingly Beautiful, but she worships dogs. She is the dattis of the dattis. So spiritual upliftment characterizes you as developed, not physical realities. The physic is going to die. You're going to die. You enter the grave to be consumed by the worms. Allahu Akbar. 
قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ وَإِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ Says the Quran. We know what the art is of the bodies. So when you're talking about development, and you say national, okay, national development. What is that? Let me give you this quotation. The quotation is taken from a site by the name onacademy.com. Onacademy.com. You can cross-check it. They say, the term national development refers to the improvement of an entire nation. End of quotation. Not the development. I take it again. The term national development refers to the improvement of an entire nation. Is Nigeria a nation? Is Nigeria a nation? Of course. Of how many people? 100 million? Nigeria is the seventh most populous nation on the face of the earth today. Do you know that? China number one. Which again? India. India. Which again? America. Which again? You don't know. Indonesia. Which again? Brazil. That is sixth. China, India, USA, Indonesia, Brazil, hmm? Pakistan, beautiful. Then Nigeria, number seven. Number eight, Bangladesh. Number nine, Russia. Number ten, Mexico. These are the giant of the world today. But can we compete with Russia? No. Developmentally speaking? No. Can you fight Ukraine? <laughs> May Allah bring peace, not pieces on the face of the earth. So now they are saying, it refers to the, the, the improvement of an entire nation. Now they, they go on to say, the term national development refers to the improvement of a country in all areas, including the political, economic, social, cultural, scientific, and material spheres. End of quotation. From onacademy.com. Now I say, wonderful. Look at you. Why didn't you mention spiritual spheres? They talked only on physicality to the detriment and injury of spirituality. Ya khadim al jismi kam tashqali khidmatihi. أتعبت نفسك فيما في خسران أقبل على النفس فاستكمل فضائلها فأنت بالروح لا بالجسم إنسان. You are by the spiritual reality a man, not by your own physical realities. Am I communicating? Am I? Am I communicating? Beautiful. Now that is what they talk talk about what development. Now, let me add to something I read. In Nigeria today, there is what they call National Development Plan. There is a body of government that is charged with the responsibility of national development. They have something to say, and let me share with you. Just like NPC, National Population Commission. Just like INEC. Hmm? They say the National Development Plan of Nigeria, listen, you are Nigerians, targets an increase in the labor force of the country to 74 million people by the year 2025, two years to come. Projected targeting. Get it? Then according, accordingly, They also want for 2021 to be about 67.05 million people actively in labor, having something to do with projection. And they say by the year 2022, last year, the figure should have drastically gone up to reach 68. 
2.75 million. By 2023, this current year, the projected number should be 70.44 million persons being gainfully employed. By the year 2024, it should be 72.20 million persons, and 2025, the figure I have already given you from onacademy.com. Now, I begin to throw this $1 million question. Are our people gainfully employed today? Now you are student, young people. You are likely to graduate to go to the labor market. I don't hope so for you. I hope you will be gainfully employed. Because the education we are acquiring is an investment education. The higher the qualification, the bigger the salary. It's okay because to be self reliant is much better than extending your hand to be given. Somebody says, Man madda yadahu la yamuddu rijlahu. He who extends hand to be given cannot extend his leg to walk freely. You are the given. Be the giver, not the given. Unless otherwise there is a compelling necessity. Am I communicating? Am I? Okay. Now you have had this. National development. But in our understanding. Okay. Now they explain how do you achieve national development. Under this quotation. Listen. They say from the same side on academy.com. They say national development is achieved by focusing on improving social infrastructure. Infrastructural facilities to be developed, to be focused on. Ensuring basic necessities like healthcare and education to be accessible to all. Is education today in the Nigerian context accessible to all? Our universities today, alhamdulillah, at times uh, even the drastically is, num is, is lower than the number looking for admission. During my days when coming to BUK, my cutoff mark was just too low then, and I made it. But today has been skyrocketed. At times, post UAM was done just to, it's a kind of just a way, a system to accommodate, to beat the challenging situation. That is why investment in private universities is very, very important. But the Muslims are lagging behind in this aspect. Believe you me. Lagging, lagging. We can only boast of not up to 10 universities, not up to 10 universities owned by the Muslims today. Al Qalab in Kazana. Al Hikmah in Elori. Which one again? Which one again of your thinking? Istiqama. They are coming. Khadija University in Majia of... Uh... But today now, the people who are, to, we are together in this country, they have more than 50 universities today. Some in the pipeline on the table of uh, NUC to just give them clarification. Go ahead. Now I will tell you what I call the 10-point agenda for us to achieve development. Now you have heard all what I have said. Now my emphasis here is on the youth. And again, the meaning of leadership. What again, what is the concept of national development? But from a Muslim perspective, development means to be developed spiritually. Believe you me. If the level of your taqwa ranks higher and higher, you are developed. Your ability to maintain praise five times a day Unfailingly, you are developed. Your ability to control your gazes against looking at things haram, you are developed. Even if you are narrow-less, cover-less, dollar-less, there is development, if only you understand. But combine the two. All right? And development means to have security. That is our understanding. Allah says, Inna 
Allah takhafu wala tahzanu wa abshiru bil jannati allati kuntum tu'adun in chapter number 41 surah fusila similarly inna alladhina qalu rabbana samat taqamu fa la khawfun alayhim wa la hum bihazun in chapter 46 al ahqab many things like this similarly in quran chapter 2 verse 177 allah says laysal birra an tawallu wujuhakum qibla al mashriq wal maghrib ولكن البر من آمن بالله واليوم الآخر والملائكة والكتاب والنبيين وآت المال على حبه ذو القربى واليتامى والمسك وابن السبيل والصائلين وفي الرقاب وأقام الصلاة وآت الزكاة والمفن بأهدهم إذا أعد والصابرين في الباساء والضراء وحين الباس أولئك الذين صدقوا وأولئك هم المتقون that is Quran 2177. There it mentions 10 points. If you have them, you are developed. You are developmentally developed. If you can possess all the cars in Kano, I'm so what? If every single hair in your body is a degree, I'm so what? You can have it. The sky can be your limit. But for you to be developed, Allah says in chapter 49, verse number 13. Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqanakum min dhakarin wa unta wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qabai. Liwat? Inna akramakum inna la akharukum mala akbarukum sinna atqaakum. Inna la alimun khabir. The best of you in the eyes of Allah is the best character wise. Is the base attitudinally, is the base being conscious of the Almighty. That is our understanding of what of develop. So a developed Muslim youth does not commit shirk. Because we are talking about Muslim youth. A developed Muslim youth does not commit zina. Abadan. A developed Muslim youth is not a liar, a backbiter, a drunkard. A fornicator, adulterer, misfit, he's not. He's intellectually superb, academically on the high side. He does not plagiarize, does not giraffe an examination. You know giraffe and bar? And winky, mas winky. Copy, 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 paste. Because of mental laziness, he is always bookish. He reads, he is bookworm. He reads. How many of you, how many books do you read in a week, in a month? You see now, you want to be like a professor. He read. Now he's what he is. You want, can I, can I say, he kiss on wenche by kidagashin kan wenche? They have someone says so I am saying, if you want to be like them, walk like them. Wasting your time on the internet, chatting, chatting the chatable, chatting, 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 chatting. TikTok, waste not the previous time. Football, Allahu Akbar. La hawla wa la quwwata illa You can even read the Quran. Read Fatiha. No way. You know Sabi, you know Sabiya. In the broken English. So what I am saying, if really you want to grasp the meaning of development, that is the meaning here. Combine the two. Walk to learn things beautifully. But you should be armed with taqwa, with knowledge. It is only through that you will be able to contribute to your quarter. Now, there is a hadith reported by Al Imam Bukhari in Bukhari and Muslim. Hadith is hadith number 660. Again, Bukhari reported it in hadith 1423. And again in 6479. Again, hadith 6806 in four places in Bukhari's compendium. But Muslim reported it in Kitabu Zakat. 
Babu fadli ikhfa isadaka. Hadis 1031. But Bukhari says kitabul adhan babu man jalasa fil masjid. Listen to the hadith. He says sab'atun yudhilluhum Allah fi dhillihi yawm la dhilla illa dhilluhum. Number one, Imamun. It is very popular. Imamun. Number two, washabun nashaa fi barat rabbihi. Beautiful. Number three, warajulun qalbuhu muallakum bil masajid. Number four, warajulan tahabba fi Allah istamaa li watafarqa alim. Number five, warajulun daatum raatun daatum an sabin wajamal fakala inni akhafla. Number six, warajulun ذكر الله خاليا ففاضت عيناه فاينلي نمبر 7 ورجل تصدق بصدقه فاخفاها حتى لا تعلم شماله ما تنفق يمينه بيوتيفول حديث ذا بوينت از ذس سيفن كلاسز اوف بيبل ار جوين تو بي شيدد اف يو لايك ات ان الله شيد اون القيامه نمبر 1 ا جاست ليدر just leader jst number two young man imagine a muslim here comes the point and you see before going further who is youth anyway are you all youth i'm asking are you kuma damana samari ne ku kuma me za mu ce ne yan mata ne kuma ko to shikena what i am saying is that who is the youth if you want to know who is the youth you go to quran chapter number 30 verse number 54 read it allah says allahul ladhi khalaqakum min dha'fin thumma ja'ala min ba'di dha'fin quwwah that correct ثم جعل من بعد قوة ضعفا وشيبا يخلق ما يشاء وهو العليم القدير That is where you can locate who is the youth Allah says it is Allah who created you from weakness after weakness strength after strength weakness and gray hair white hair meaning the older you are the weaker you become That's correct Allah says in chapter 30 surah yasin verse number 68 read the ayah Allah says what waman nu'amirna kisuf al-khalq afala yaqilu the one to whom we've given long life we reduce him we call it the law of growth and decay it applies to all human created entities now that's the youth the ulama are saying ash-shabab marhalat al-quwwah bayna dha'fayn Youthfulness is an age between two weaknesses the weakness of uh, being minor the weakness of being major senior that's where you can conveniently locate who is the youth now you see the quran talks about the youth a lot it is quran chapter 21 verse number 60 concerning prophet abraham what did they say qalu sami'ina fatan يذكر يقال له we heard of a young man fatan read quran chapter number 18 verse number 10 naam mhm if our fitya to fitya when young people are retire to a cave similarly in verse number 13 subsequently innahu fitya to namanu bi rabbihim fitya 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 to tell you what that is the time of the struggle prophet abraham in chapter 6 surah al-an'am verse number 74 read it id qala ibrahim li abihi azara atattakhidh asnaman alaha inni araka wa qawmaka fi dhalalin mubin when ibrahim said to his dad oh my father will you take you know an idol there we are you maryam in chapter 19 verse 19 read us through to maryam nana maryam when angel jabrail came to her in a form of a fully grown of man he looked at her what did she say 
قالت اني اعوذ بالرحمن منك ان كنت تقيا قال انما انا رسول ربك لاهب لك غلاما زكيا قالت ان يكون لي غلام ولم يمسسني بشر ولم اكو بغيا قال كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين ولنجعله آية للناس ورحمة منا وكان أمرا مقضيا قرآن 1919 داو you see because she was full of spirituality so when you talk about Muslim youth not a Muslim in America but I want to tell you even in America today you come across a lot of youth who are wallahi al-adhi you will be you will be surprised I went to an American prison for a preaching. They invited me from New York City. I was driven in a car. 15 hour journey. In a car. I didn't use the flight. In the city of Huntingdon. Now you see what? Not Huntingdon. Yeah, Huntingdon really. In the state of Pennsylvania. In the prison yard, they call it correctional home. The first time I came across the name correctional in Nigeria copy copy they come from America follow follow everything you copy them now today they don't say cheer on they say cheer because some feminists feel saying cheer is an insult to feminism so they are afraid say okay cheer no longer cheer man You can't say cheer woman of course. So they're now maintaining only cheer cheer cheer. Okay, that is a different thing. What I'm saying the, the the prisoners there that was in 2016 or 2017. Well like a lot of them from the city of Philadelphia. Muslims. And Ahlu Sunnah. When you make any quotation from Ibn Tayyib say oh hadha Sheikh Khura. That is number one. In the city of Newark which is the capital of the state of New Jersey after leaving New York City through uh the Washington Bridge 15 no 20 American young boys memorized Quran 2015 and I was requested to be the guest speaker there wallahi I shed tears out of ecstasy out of happiness is oh this is america where drug abuse is there where rascality is there where redundancy is there yet allah is allah twenty of them memorize this i have been saying in so many places similarly a young by the name ayub his name ayub that was in 2017 or there about in the city of Atlanta the state of Georgia of America i was giving a talk and the young man was there looking at me with his cowboy like cap cap at the end of it he said ya sheikh ana rajulun amriki huna wulib in arabic like from medina i say wow according to what they say i don't say wow but i said it there You know what? He told me I became a Muslim at the age of 16. Then I told myself I can never live in this country full of a lot of bad things. I said, "What did you do? Are you? His name is Ayu." He said, "I had to leave USA to go to Yemen and study Islam." He memorized Quran there. When I met him, he was at the age of 26. He drove me from the city of Atlanta to the city of uh, then a state in North Carolina Greensboro As you're driving the car he said ya yeah, sheikh can I hear your recitation ask me to listen no 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 I want to hear your own The point is a young man in that place where a lot of things bad take place drug abuse killing you know much What do you have to cherish there? Nothing. To me to live in my village in Kano is by far better than living there. To me. 
But Allah does everything. Wallahu ala kulli shayin qadir. A young man. So now I thought of my young boys and girls in Nigeria. How do you, how can you compete with Ayub? Let me tell you. You have more than 20,000 Ayubs in Nigeria. One thing will make you happy with Nigerian youth is that we have one of the lion's share of the memorizers of Quran in Kano, in Nigeria, across Africa. We thank Allah for that. You want to know this? Go to the places of Tahajj in the month of Ramadan. You will be surprised. Little kids reading the Qira'a from Fatiha Baqarah to Min al Jinnati wa Nas. Of it! Some of them are here, I believe. Amongst you, there are them. Here too, there are girls. Because Dalika Fadlullah Yutihi. So, the youth, that's why I started with Abraham al Dahil. Now, my question Who was the grandfather of Rahman al Dahil? I told you, I will ask you. Before I count five, answer me. One, two, three. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Four, five. Hisham ibn Abdul Malik. In which year did he arrive the Iberian Peninsula? That means you didn't write. And I told you, I will ask you, what is written is memorized. What is not escapes. Jazakumullah khair. Just to refresh your memory. Having said all this, on a final note before concluding, there are 13 points that all the Muslim youth should hold if they want to give their contribution to national development. Number one. Number one, security. You make sure in your locality you help in making sure the society is secure. That you can do. Especially now today you have these kidnapping, these kind of things. In your own place, you can do everything possible to make sure their dastardly act are blocked through your way. Through calling to phone, you can help. In the university, maintain security in the university. Don't engage in senseless demonstrations, okay, vandalizing university. You are vandalizing yourself. The doctors have their degree already. You are the one in the water. That is how you can help as a young man. Don't allow anybody to just blow into your ear a negative information. Number one, I said what? Security. And I want to tell you, security, Allah says, those that will have security are those who fear Allah. Read Quran chapter 6 verse 182. He says, الَّذِينَ آمُنُوا وَلَمْ يَلْبِسُوا إِيمَانَهُمْ بِذُرْمٍ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمُ الْأَمْ Those who fear Allah without committing shirk, for them shall be al-am security. Today we feel security is to have gadgets, to have guns. No. Security in Islam is of two kinds. There is physical and spiritual security. You can be physically secured, but you are a drunkard. Going after when you are not secure because you are allowing Satan to attack you. That is insecurity. One security, fear Allah. Now, today our money is undergoing the process of redesignation. Now, some people told me there are some people exploiting people's needs. He tells you, okay, I will give you 10,000 newly designed Nera. Give me. The old one to be expired very soon, and I'm going to give you, you are going to give me 12,000. Profiting how many naira? That is haram. People are doing that. And I learned that DS is doing something. It's very important because it is haram. It is riba. 
Riba is dangerous. Read Quran Baqara 2275. Alladhina yakuluna riba la yakumun to the end of it. Because of time factor. That is number one. What, I, what did I say? Security. Number two, food production. As a young Muslim, young man, you can, you can help Nigeria to be self-sufficient in food production. Don't say, well, I'm a university looking for my degree. Your faculty of agri here in the university here, you can learn the mechanisms, okay? Extension services. You can do that. Have a farm in your backyard. As a young man, as a young lady, that can be done, definitely. If any nation is uh, self-sufficient in food production, that nation can, 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 can be boastful. I know of a city in America, they call it farming done. Farming done. It's a predominantly farming state in Pennsylvania. So that is number two. Farming. Even the Quran tells the Quraysh, الَّذِي أَطْعَمَهُمْ مِنْ جُوِئِنْ وَأَمَنَهُم مِنْ خَفْ Quran 106, chapter, verse number four. So that is number two. As a Muslim youth, you can help in making leadership good and similarly in contributing your quota for national development. Concerning leadership, I will come to that before my time is up. That is number two. Number three, quality education. Yeah, very important. We want education to be qualitative. Education is beyond the paper I have acquired during my courses, okay? It's beyond your own. It is on to much higher your attitude, your character, education. In choosing leaders, make sure they are good. Not just a political a prostitute. Some of them you know, are there. Some are very, very good. Mashallah. So make sure good people are elected into the office. Now I think the debate is going on right now. Maybe, maybe. Here in Buki. Those to be elected should have the qualities. Should be accessible. Should be responsible, reasonable. Corruption free. If you are approached by them in trying to correct leadership, make sure you are not corrupt. That is through education. Security, food, what again? What again? Quality education, not quantity. Quantity doesn't matter. What matters is quality. Even a lady in the house, she can help in improving the education of her kid. I have been telling our mothers, you can give your child two, two ayats from Quran on daily basis. Let them memorize it. Wallahi, you will be surprised. By the count of the year, how many verses have you memorized? Teach our kids how to pray during putting their gowns, eating the food, returning to the bait. Very important. How many so far? Three. I say what security? Food? What again? Quality education. Number four, job opportunities. Yeah. Now we are talking about uh, development plan. Well, how can a Muslim youth be here? He definitely can be there. If you happen to be employed in these parastatal, don't use impunity. Or saying this belongs to me. Make employment something very important. Because if we are producing highly educated boys and girls without job, idle hands, they say, are the devil's workshop. Oh yeah, that is important. Security, food, quality education, job opportunities. Number five, shelter. Shelter. If somebody wants to marry a lady without where to keep her, is that going to be possible? It's not. You got to have where you can shelter yourself. How can you help as a Muslim youth? Yeah, do something. Own your own house. It's practically possible. Does not come from the sky. Don't learn anybody. That is important. Shelter. Number six, is it five or six? Environmental cleanliness, very important. Environmental 
cleanliness. You have a friendly environment. Today in Kano, you, you, you see a lot of refuse heaped in the front of people's houses. Flies flying. Mosquito infested heaps. We have a lot of diseases. The water not clean. Your waterborne diseases. As a young man, how can you help? Through enlightenment campaign. Insecticide. I can get in your area. That can be done. Remove the dust there. Don't be of lackadaisical behavior. That can be important. Be productively productive. That is important. So for how many points have I mentioned? How many points? Beautiful. Healthcare delivery system. Health is very important. Because health is wealth. Health is? Health is what? Wealth. Then, as a young man, as a Muslim, how do you help the nation? In Buki, we have hospital for healthcare services. For the students as well. For the teachers. Is that correct? So you can be of a great help in making sure healthcare is maintained. Is maintained. You make sure you about any effort in bringing expired drugs. Today, drug abuse in Kano, oh, astaghfirullah. And more than 80% of these dirty things are consumed by the youth. By the youth. Drug abuse, systemic abuse. You can be of great help for national development, making sure these things are stopped. May Allah make it easy. How many so far? How many? How many did I, seven? seven? Number eight. Good roads. Well, you say, well, it's not, it's not my responsibility. You have a stake there too. The roads leading you outside Kano to BUK, you can be of help. You happen to be employed there. What have you done in making sure our, our roads are more terrible? But today, most of our roads are just like death traps. Death traps. A lot of people are dying. In thousands because of negative rope. As you are speeding abruptly, there is a big hole. You apply brake, it is somersault. Try to dodge, you die. Go and see Saudi roads. Believe you me, from Jeddah to Dammam, Dammam to Khobar, Khobar to Riyadh, you don't see pit holes. As you are trying to say, take a rest. I remember I traveled one day from London to Birmingham in, in, in UK. Believe you me, you see the road just like this one. Nigeria uncle. Corruption. So roads very important. That's the number what? Number nine, power supply. Very important. Today, our power supply is epileptic. You know epilepsy, ba? You know epilepsy? What is epilepsy? It's a mental set of illness that makes somebody false constantly. So epileptic. The trouble with Nigerian power supply, either at G O T O D, G T D, generation of trouble, transmission or wire. I can hear Jen said. Is it Jen said? Where is Nepal? Nepal never accept power always, they say. Definition of Nepal? Never expect power always. That is the definition of Nepal. I'm not the one talking it. Now where is power? You go to South Africa with about just 48 million people, according to they have more than 40,000 megawatts. They're not of the Nigerian population. Ghana celebrated 10 year unbreakable power supplies because of Akosombo power station. Imagine. So that is number nine power supply. 
You as a young man, you can help in making sure we have un epileptic power supply through paying your bill. Don't interfere with the gadget. Be responsible and reasonable. Is that correct? That is number what? Number nine. Number ten. Number ten. Did I mention water? Water. Water is life. Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنَ الْمَاءِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ حَيٍّ أَفَلَا In chapter number 21. Water is life. As a young man, don't, don't, don't squander water. Don't embezzle water. Today we have a negative situation. Somebody goes and buys a leather bag of full of uh, pure water. The little kids, if one of them takes one and pees it, the remainder he dumps it down. His younger brother picks a new one like this. They feel not easy to drink the remainder of his brother. This is the only Islam. This is the negative behavior. Corrected. As a young Muslim youth, you can do your base and make a thing good. How many so far? Ten. Number eleven. Fight corruption. Kill corruption or it kills you. Is it corruption to ask somebody to write examination on my behalf in BUK? No, you have to talk. You have to talk. Is it corruption? Yes. Is it done by some people? Yes. Don't do it. Maintain your sagacity, your mental capacity, your ability. Don't steal. The scholars are saying if you use somebody's degree, you go for what you are eating haram. Believe you me. You borrow somebody's BSc, master's, PhD, you're getting money, you're eating haram. It's not out of your own sweat, somebody's sweat. Because of your mental laziness. Try. Allah will help you, definitely. So corruption troubles our nation in Nigeria. May Allah give us out of it. Mr. Chairman, permit me, Professor, to finish because the time is almost up. That is, how many so far? Corruption. Wama adara kama corruption. Wama adara kama corruption. Corruption or corruption, according to French people, ah, ce n'est pas bien. The French says it. It's bad thing. It's not good. The war belongs to whom? Belongs to Allah. So fight corruption. Today, even these almajiris commit corruption today. You will give them food. The big one will tilt the bowl to himself. He will be boxing the rest. Get away from me. Corruption. A woman in her house, the husband will give her money for antenatal in the hospital. The remainder in a pocket. Somebody because of brown brown envelope can grant admission to a boy not competent to a faculty in a university because he has collected something. Some do it. Corruption. In the assembly, some members of the House of Assembly, some parliamentarians will do padding. You know padding? Padding. They will add something into the budgetary proposal it's not it's not part of it they will add add, add waiting for the president or governor to just sign if it is signed they will collect it the remaining they give it to you it's called pardon and it is haram corruption all over the place don't do it as a young man don't begin to be criticizing leaders when you are given leadership you fail Seek for Allah's assistance. That is number what? Number? And number 10. Try number 11. Number what? 11 or 12. Be accessible. Accessibility. As a leader, open your door to the people.
For example, you want to see Amir MSS or VC of the university or an, or an imam, they should be accessible. Meaning, don't just, just close yourself in a, an area nobody can just come to you. You are a public property anyway. That is very important. That is important even in the matrimony between you and your wife, your better half be accessible to her constantly. She too should be to you accessible. Accessibility is a keyword here. What about the leadership? That is number what? Be accessible to your younger ones. You go on vacation, on holidays, be accessible as a young man. Teach the young ones in your house what you have learned. Buy new boards. Hey, come on. Yahya Abdul Karim Maimuna Aisha. Yalla ta'ala wa'allimukum ma ta'allamtu fil madrasa. Give them what you have learned. Qul lahum, hadha barraq. Hadhihi sayyara. Hadha baytun. Ta'allamu waktubu ta'allamu hatta takunu natqim bilugh al-arabiya. That is important. Teach them English if you like it. Teach them French. These colonialistic languages. Comment tout appel, jam appel. Give them if you fear, if you're keto. That is number what? Number, number 13. I said 13 point agenda. Be humble. Don't be arrogant. Never. Don't be arrogant. As a young Muslim, you should be known by your good behavior. Arrogant, don't. In Hausa, I have been saying, Girman kai ba kyo, Girman kai yena de kyo. Which one do you take? Any difference between Girman kai and Girman kai? Or oh, a world of difference? I think it's time to rest my case because of time factor. I thank you very much for this wonderful turnout. May Allah bless you. May Allah make you come out with flying colors, with your high sounding degrees, and may Allah make it stepping stone to Al Jannah. Amen. Mr. Chairman, sir, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Amir, MSS, MSS in general, I thank you for your turnout. Finally, finally. Read this prayer. Read as I read. Say after me. Allahumma. Allahumma. Salimna min al-uyubi. Wajannibna al-wuqu'a fi al-dhunubi. Wahablana amalan huwa indaka min al-marghubi. Ya Allah al-ghuyubi. ويا رب المربوب Take it again اللهم سلمنا من العيوب وجنبنا الوقوع في الذنوب وهب لنا أملا وإنك من المرغوب يا ألام الغيوب ويا رب المربوب هو اسم مرايزيت السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته